Hello again, Facebook and YouTube. My name is Mark Eldon. Welcome to part three of How to Draw a Cartoon or Comic Strip. And today I'll be taking you through how to import your image into Adobe Photoshop, tweak that in Illustrator, add text, all that type of stuff, uh, put it back into Photoshop, uh, and we'll probably finish up there in part four, we'll be you know, finalizing it. But um, first off, you can see I'm at my uh, my Finn's comic strip page, facebook.com forward slash Finn's comic. Pretty happy with uh, how everything's tracking along at the moment. You can see my videos are uploaded. Um, I'm playing around with uh, animating the shark at the moment in Toon Boom. That's coming along. Hopefully I'll get him talking soon. Uh, it's very hard to draw him with just a mouse at the moment, so can't wait until I get my tablet. Um, you know, almost 7,000 fans. I mean, I can't ask. You know, it's been a great journey in the last couple of months, so thank you for all your support. Um, and obviously, you know, my goal is to hit 100,000 fans to submit my work to publishers. So, um, thanks for your support so far. Look forward to... Uh, what we can get in the next few months. Um, so I will close this. And you can see here that I have Adobe Photoshop CS3 open and Adobe Illustrator CS3 open. So they're the two programs that we'll be working with today. Um, and to me, it doesn't really matter what version you've got, CS4, CS5, whatever, you know, they all do the same stuff uh, for what we need it to do. Um, uh, and I guess the first thing we need to do is scan in the image that we drew together the other day. So if I go to File, Import, you can see my scanner is here, my Canon scan, Canon scan. So I click on that, and that will open my scanner program. Okay. So this is the uh, sketch of Finn swimming along and the, the light coming through that we worked on in part one. Uh, you can see here these uh, highlighted lines. I can move this around to scan more of the image or less of the image. Okay, so for now I'm pretty happy with what I've got selected, um, and that's the area that's going to be scanned. I don't want all of this junk up here from the corner of the paper. I want to get rid of that. So happy with that. Uh, you can see my scanner gives me a few different options, you know, photo, color, magazine. Um, I don't, we don't need to worry about that for what I'm going to show you today. Um, and the dots per inch, my scanner only goes up to 300, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, dots, the more dots per inch you have, the, the larger and better quality your scan will be. But um, for now, that's what I've got. So you can hit preview to give you a snapshot of what you've just put in the scanner. Uh, it's all set up for us so I just need to hit scan and that will then scan the image within these pixelated lines. Okay. So when this finishes it's going to ask me do I want to scan any other documents. I'm going to say no and close that. Okay, so there is our scanned image of the drawing that we worked on the other day. And as you can see, it's not uh, sitting at the right angle at the moment. So if I go up here to Image, Rotate Canvas, I've got a few different options here, but I just want to rotate at 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, and there is my image the right way up. Um, what I want to do now is save this image. So if I want to go File, Save As, um, I'm just going to save it as Pane 1 in my video folder. I'm saving over a file there, that's why I said that, but um, that's now saved as Pane 1 in my video folder. Okay, um, and for now I can close that image in Photoshop because I'm now going to move over to Adobe Illustrator. Okay, uh, File, New, and a4, I usually leave it at A4, you can choose whatever you want, but I, I find that works for me. I click OK, and that loads up a, uh, a new blank A4 document. Now, if I, if I hold um, Shift down on my keyboard, you can see a little hand comes up. I can move this uh, A4 template over a bit. It gives me a bit of free room over here. 
Um, and unlike Photoshop, I can't just open a JPEG image uh, into into here. I have to place uh, the file. So I'm going to go File Place, choose my sketch, and place that into Illustrator. Um, now, if I choose my move to the move tool up here, I can just move this over to the document, and um, there we go. I now have our image in Illustrator, and you can see that the white of this page against the white of my scan is horrible. You can see all these smudge marks where I put my hand over the page. Um, really, really looks shocking at the moment. So, um, the great thing that I love about Illustrator um, is it just saves so much time. I don't have to ink my work, I don't have to draw it in pencil, draw over it with an ink pen, rub out my pencil, scan it in, hopefully it looks okay. Um, this is a really, really good quick technique that I'm going to show you. Um, so we click on the document and straight up here we see Live Trace. Okay, And watch what happens when I click this button. Bang. Okay, so now I've got a very uh, crisp, clear image, uh, black and white, that's got rid of all of those, most of those smudge marks. Um, there's a few things I can tweak uh, in Photoshop a bit later, but um, you know, very happy with the result that that's given me. Uh, if I click on the image again, you can note you notice that we've got a lot of presets here. So, um, you know, if this is a hand-drawn sketch or a comic card, if I, if I click one of these, it's going to change the presets for that live trace and give me a different result. Okay, uh, if I was to choose comic art, it's going to give me a, another different result. Um, this box here to the side, the tracing options box, let's bring that over, you can see um, that it gives me all those different modes up here, but it allows me to customize these um, the threshold, the pixels, and the amount of blur that the, that the um, trace is giving off. Uh, and once you've played around with these settings, you can save your preset to something that you're happy with. Um, you can click the preview button here and play around with you know your sample sizes and everything else and you should, you'll see that happen live on the on the page the biggest problem that you have to worry about is your computer running out of uh, virtual memory uh, I don't know why this program does it but it does it to me all the time I've got 12 gig of RAM and I still run out of virtual memory uh, if anyone knows how I fix that please let me know because it does uh, frustrate me quite a bit um, okay so I'm just going to cancel out of this um, because I already have a preset saved called fins so I just choose my drop down box so all I would do to make my preset once again I would choose the settings I want save preset and just give it a name uh, once I've given it a name it'll come up in the drop down box down here so if I just choose fins to it's going to load all the presets that I had loaded in there and you can see now that um, it's softened some of the edges it's made that made it a bit smoother um, some of the lines I might feel are a little bit dark still or a little bit thick so I can go into my threshold up here and I can just back that off a little bit maybe 111 and when I let go or click off off there you should see that change there just there we go so you can see that the lines just got a little bit lighter uh, and a little bit uh, you know, less heavy, so I'm pretty happy with with that. I might need to go up just a tad, so I might just make that 117 and click off. Yeah, that's a bit better. So hopefully you can see that okay. Um, okay, so I'm now happy with my scan. I've got a nice clean picture. I haven't spent an hour inking it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the result. What I can do, if I've got a thought bubble up here that I would normally just draw in, I can click the, the type tool, click on the screen, and type whatever I want. Nice day for a swim. 
Okay, so that font doesn't look very cartoony. So, uh, a very nice person, Kurt, has given me some great cartoon uh, fonts. Wild and Crazy is the one I love to use. Um, and you can see that I can change, once I've got this highlighted, which is just left click, drag over, you can see that I can change that to whatever size I want. And if that was a thought bubble, I'd probably want it uh, broken down like that, just by hitting the enter button, highlight it all, hit this one to center the, you know, and that would probably fit nicely within a thought bubble. Um, and I just want to tell you guys that one of the reasons that I use Illustrator to do the the, the type tool is the just the crisp uh, result that you get on your text. If I zoom right in on that, you can see that there's, um, you know, that's a very crisp text. Uh, and, you can, and I find it very hard to get that result in Photoshop. I think it has something to do with uh, Illustrator using vectors and all of that stuff, which... I don't really understand all that well, but um, all I know is it gives me a great result, and that's why I use it. So, okay, so I'm pretty happy with the picture that I have there. Um, what I'm going to do now is export this picture, and you could save it right over the top of uh, the Pain One JPEG that we worked on before, or you could make a new one. I'm just going to save it over the top. Um, and here's an interesting uh, section, color module, oh, sorry, color model, um, CMYK, RGB or, or grayscale. I tend to, to prefer RGB, once again, I don't, I don't know all the technical differences between the two, but when I use RGB and I add color to my, um, to my picture in Photoshop, I get a lot more vibrant, uh, bright, cheerful colors with RGB than I than I do when I choose the CMYK mode. So I always choose RGB if I'm going to be working on this in color. Um, that's the one I choose. Uh, you can change that in Photoshop. It's not the end of the world if you choose CMYK and you, you want to change it later on. You can, you can change it quite easily. Um, I don't want to save that now. So uh, um, that's what I choose. So that's now exported. I can close this document in Illustrator. We probably are finished in Illustrator now. And we're going to go back to Photoshop. Okay. When I go File, Open, and I choose that, um, that document that we were working on, you can see it's all there. Okay. So that's going to uh, almost conclude the Part 3 tutorial. Uh, part four will go into cleaning this image up, adding it to a template, um, finishing off the product, uh, and part five will probably go into coloring. So, um, just quickly, if you click on uh, image adjustments, sorry, image mode, you can choose CMYK or RGB here as well. So, if you did save it accidentally in Illustrator as CMYK, and you were going to want to work it on uh, add color to your picture. You can uh, it's just as easy as going image mode and RGB. Okay, uh, actually, let me give you a demonstration of what I'm referring to because this will hopefully make you understand what I'm getting at. So, I've got this very vibrant green color here, and if I choose paint bucket. Uh, and, I, and I click on this shark, you can see how bright that green is. Um, when I click mode and CMYK color, see how it changes, right? I can't get that same bright, vibrant green color, even though I haven't changed anything in the, the color settings. Um, the color is just, it just comes out a lot more drab. And, you know, you might prefer that. I think for graphic design, uh, it, it is a lot more accurate when you're trying to uh, keep the same color for brochures and things like that. But for my purpose, for cartoons, I like it on RGB and I like the difference in color result that I get for having it set on that. So uh, hopefully this has been another useful demonstration. Hoping it saves 
you guys a bit of time if you are a cartoonist and you're currently ink and you're looking for a quicker option this is what I do um, it looks like I've used an ink uh, pen but I haven't um, so hopefully you got a bit from that uh, please check out my page facebook.com forward slash fins comic if you like it please click like and I'll see you in part three